This is a short presentation to discuss enrolling in health benefits coverage when you retire for the police and fire retirements system. As with all of our presentations, this is only meant to be a general overview. If you require more information, please contact our website, look for fact sheets number 11 and 47 for health benefits, and fact sheet number 73 for dental benefits, or you can contact our office. In general, eligibility for health benefits in retirement is reserved for full-time employees who were eligible for health benefits coverage with their employer at the time of retirement. The three categories of full-time employees who may be eligible for state health benefits coverage in retirement include state employees, local government employees who were covered by the state health benefits program by their employer and whose employer has agreed to provide coverage in retirement, and a group of local police and firemen who may be eligible for coverage under what is called Chapter 330. We will explain that more in the next slide. The eligibility for Chapter 330 for a PFRS retiree includes four things. First, they had to be eligible for health, health coverage with their employer immediately preceding retirement. Second, they had to retire with at least 25 years or, of service credit or on a disability retirement. Third, they are not eligible to receive any sort of post-retirement medical benefit from their employer. And fourth, they are not eligible for any employer group coverage from, from any employment that they may have after retirement. If they meet all four of these criteria, they, they will be eligible for Chapter 330 coverage at a discounted rate, which we will discuss later. As far as the end of your active health benefits coverage, that depends largely upon where you worked. If you worked somewhere that was participating in the state health benefits program, they are required to cover you for 30 days or two pay periods past your retirement date. Generally, if you worked for a non-participating employer, they will terminate your coverage as of your retirement date. Either way, your retired coverage picks up the next day, and there is no gap in coverage. If you are eligible for state health benefits coverage in retirement, you should receive an offering letter about 45 days prior to your retirement date. This letter will also tell you if your coverage is employer paid or if you will have to pay for some or all of the coverage. In retirement, you will receive health benefits coverage, prescription drug coverage, and there is an available dental plan if you wish to participate in that. If you work for the state of New Jersey, you will most likely be auto-enrolled in the same coverage that you had while you were working. This will also include the dental plan. We will send you a letter that explains this, and you will have the option to change coverage or waive coverage. Either way, if you're changing or waiving, you must fill out a form and send it in to us. For members who did not work for the state, their offering letter, letter will instruct them to download a retired status application from our website and complete it and send it in within 60 days. Even if you're waiving coverage because you have other coverage, you must submit the form. This is the Retired Status Health Benefits application. Over the next several slides, we will explain each one of the five sections on the application in detail so you will have no problem filling out this form. Section 1 is where you enter your basic information, name, address, phone number, and the like. It also is the area where you tell us if you or any of your dependents have Medicare Part A or Part B. Section 2 looks a lot more confusing than it actually is. For a new retiree, you simply check off that you are a new retiree. Then you check off which plan you would like to participate in. And if you're waiving coverage, you indicate the other coverage you have that is allowing you to waive our coverage. In general, we find that most members who were participating in state health benefits while they were working will select the same coverage they had while they were working. However, if you are new to state health benefits, you may want to visit our website and check out the plans that we offer. On our website, once you get into the health benefits section, you will find a section on retired group eligibility and plan information and program descriptions. This is where you'll find all the information you could possibly want about the various plans that we offer. Section 3 is simply asking for the coverage level that you are choosing, whether it's single, whether it's member and spouse, whether it's family, whether it's parent and child, 
And it's also asking if you wish to participate in our dental coverage, which is optional. And if you are, at what coverage level are you going to participate? Again, you can find information about the dental plan in fact sheet number 73. Section 4 is the area in which you will enter your dependence information. If you have more dependents than there are boxes for, you can attach separate sheets and include the same information for them. The eligible dependents are the same as the eligible dependents while you were working. You can cover your spouse or partner. And you can cover your children until the end of the year they turn 26. If they are disabled, they can be covered beyond age 26 with verification of disabled status. In retirement, you are able to add dependents at any time. However, there is proof of dependent status that you will have to submit with your application, and we will discuss that on the next slide. You will find this sheet with the retired status application on our website. It outlines what documents must be submitted in each case. A couple of things to remember about this. For a spouse, we need a marriage certificate and the most recent copy of the 1040 form in order to prove that you are still married. If you do not file taxes jointly, you have to provide us some sort of joint debt, whether that is a utility bill or an insurance bill or something like that. For children, we require a birth certificate with both of the parents' names on the birth certificate. Everything else you can read on this form. However, keep in mind we cannot enroll your dependents unless you provide us with this information. Step 5 is the easiest. You sign it, you date it, you let us know if you're sending your Medicare documentation in, and that's it. If you or any of your dependents are eligible for Medicare at the time of retirement, you must provide us with proof of your enrollment in Medicare in the form of a copy of your Medicare card or a copy of the award letter from Social Security indicating the date you will be eligible for both, both Parts A and Part B. If this occurs after retirement, which in most cases is, it will for police and fire members, we will notify you about three months prior to this. But you must have Medicare A and B coverage in order, in, in order to have continued coverage in the state health benefits program. You will also be automatically enrolled in a Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage when you are eligible. As far as the cost of coverage, generally having 25 years of service credit or disability retirement will qualify members for paid coverage in retirement. The extent to which this coverage is paid by the state or their employer is dependent upon the level of the contract that was in effect when they reached their 25 years or when they retired, depending again on the contract. If someone was not eligible because they did not have 25 years or did not retire on disability retirement and they were at a state health benefits location, they may be eligible to purchase the coverage at a group rate in retirement. They will receive an offering letter that tells them this as well. As far as those members who are eligible for Chapter 330 health benefits coverage, here's how it works. The state will pay for 80% of the cost of the least expensive plan that we offer, and then the retiree will pay whatever is left over. There are rate charts on our website where you can look at this, but I've given you an example here for the NJ Direct 15 plan, which is probably the most commonly chosen plan, and a member and spouse with neither one on Medicare. The full cost would be $2,286 per month. The Chapter 330 cost for the member would be $762 per month, so, so that is quite a savings under Chapter 330. Chapter 2, PL 2010, which was effective May 21st, 2010, had a provision in it that prohibits two members who are each enrolled in state health benefits plans from covering each other. Therefore, eligible individual may only enroll as a retiree or be covered as a dependent. So if you and your spouse were both covered by state health benefits coverage, you would only be able to cover each other under one plan or each take single coverage. 
In addition, eligible children are only allowed to be covered by one of the subscribers. Even though there is no specific open enrollment period when you're retired, you're eligible to change plans once per year, as long as you were in the plan for at, for at least 12 months. However, since most of the plans will generally cover you anywhere you go, there usually isn't a whole lot of reason to change the plan unless you're dissatisfied with that plan. If your coverage is terminated, however, you will not be eligible to resume that coverage, whether that was a voluntary termination or an involuntary termination. The paid health benefits coverage typically ends at the member's death. It will end the first of the month following the month in which that member passed away. Their surviving spouse or partner will be sent an offering letter and they, and, and they will be able to pick up the coverage and it will be continuous unless they don't get back to us within 60 days. They will generally be responsible for paying the cost of the coverage at the group rates, although there are some local employers who have agreed to pay the cost for surviving spouses and partners. If you need more information, you can visit our website and see fact sheet number 11 for general health benefits information, fact sheet number 47 for information on chapter 330, or fact sheet number 73 for dental benefits, or you can contact our office. Thank you very much.